What up? Comparing two treatments. Mm -hmm. Here we go, you guys. What up, what up? Almost to the end. You're almost there. So in this lesson, we've been learning about uh, stating the null hypothesis, the alternative hypothesis, and the parameter of interest. So this is kind of the tail end. important part about statistics is that we can um, accept a claim or reject a claim. Maybe not accept a claim, but fail to reject a claim <coughs> or reject it. And so a basketball player uh, claimed that he can make 80% of his free throws. In a random sample of 50 shots, the player made only 32. Okay, so the null hypothesis is what the claim is, right? So we would say that our p-value is equal to 80%. So p equals 0 0.80. The alternative, it would be less than 80% because they're not that good. And then the parameter of interest is the percent of free throws that he actually makes. And so there's the answer number one, not too bad. Potato, potato, a potato chip producer has just received a truckload of potatoes from its main supplier. If the producer determines that 8% of the potatoes in the shipment have blemishes, the truck will be sent away to get another load from the supplier. So they'll reject that load. Because you can't have that many blemishes. Come on, you can't sell potatoes with tons of blemishes in them. Those nasty potato chips that look all nasty. No one wants those. Right, so the null hypothesis is that it says, well, if the producer determines that more than 8%, then we got a problem. So equal to 8% is usually the null, right, equal, because that's okay. But then the alternative is, is if, it's, if, it's, if it's more, right, if it's more than 8%, that would be a problem, that's the alternative. So the first one was less than, this time there's a problem if it's more. Parameter of interest is percent of potatoes with blemishes. There you go. So does it kind of make it sense? I feel like those two are really good examples um, to help you. So try question three and four. Um, now when it talks about being significant or not, um, it's just kind of how close to what they've their null is. You know, can we reject the null, fail to reject the null? Um, it depends on the p-value, right? Depends on the p-value with a significant level of 95%, for example. Um, so if we drop down to the bottom, so 73% of first-year college students responding to a national survey identified being very well off financially as an important goal. But only 132 out of the 200 actually say this goal is important. So the null would be equal to 0.73. And the alternative is they're like, not really, right? Less than 0.73. The parameter of interest is the propor proportion of first-year college students who think being well off is financially is an important personal goal and so that's the uh, proportion is our parameter of interest and then the results are not significant Ooh, why are they not significant um, so let's take a look at the um, 0.132 over 200 and so 0.132 over 200 is 0.66 and so is 0.66 significant to point, compared to like 0.73%? Well, it's definitely more than 5%. So maybe we should, um, maybe we should double check another one really quick and uh, make sure that you really understand what's going on here. So we're going to we're gonna try another one. Let's see. So we'll try that third one because that kind of talked about it or fourth one. There we go. Okay, here we go. So according to the Center of Disease and Prevention, CDC website, 50% of high school students have never smoked a cigarette. Tayden wonders whether this national result holds true in his large urban high school. For his AP Statistics class project, Tayden surveys a simple random sample of 150 students, and he gets from all 150 students, 90 of them said that they have never smoked. So the null is equal to 50%. Um, if it's greater than 50%, we've got a problem, right? Because that would be bad. Um, and so the parameter of interest is a percent of high school students who have never smoked, right? And um, but what about that significance level? Is uh, 90 out of 150, is that significant? Well, let's take a look. So 90 out of 150, what percentage is that? So that's 60%, which is more than 50%. And uh, there's even a thing that I won't go into too much detail because that's more of an AP stats thing. 
Um, but that's where you could actually do a, a, a significance test, basically. And so to do like a to do a significance test, um, you'd actually go into stat over to tests, and then you do like a um, here we go. So we go to stat, we go over to tests, we do like a proportion test, just a one sample proportion, probably a z test, and so. We'd have a um, alpha level of 50%, and we'd have a sample size of 150 students. X equals 90 students that said that they didn't. And then we want the proportion equal to that, and uh, and so that would be either greater or less than. So we actually want to go for greater because that would be bad to go for greater, like that. And then we would go to calculate. And so we'd go to calculate, and so then it tells us, and it didn't do it. What the? Ah, uh, never mind. Anyways, so it is significant because, uh, uh, so the question was, um, with a, a confidence level of 95%, are the results significant or not, if the results are significant? And so 60% is um, way higher than uh, 50%, even 10%, which is double our, double our alpha level. Our alpha level would be 5%. And so if it's less than 5%, um, then, you re then you reject the null, is what happens with our p-value. And uh, yeah. And so just kind of to help you out there, um, the next one um, about the Gallup poll is uh, not significant. Right, doing a proportion kind of test there, and then not significant again um, for the student satisfaction. We'll let you try those next ones. Cool. So hopefully this is helpful to you, and thanks for watching. Thanks for trying your best and learning all this AP stats at the end of Math 3 Honors. We're learning statistics. Appreciate you. Thanks for taking our class. You're almost there. Hang in there. You're nearly there. Bye for now.